Hi, my name's Wayne. I'm the creator of the print table. And you're here today because you want to build your very own print table. That's why I post it here on Instructables. And I'm going to talk you through and show you how you can build your very own print table. Don't be put off by the amount of steps you've seen up there. There's lots of steps to make it easy. I want beginners to be able to get involved in 3D printing and enjoy 3D printing in the same way I have. And it's on that note I'd like to talk a little bit about how I got started in 3D printing. My business is accident repairs. I repair customers' cars. And it was way back in 2011 that I was seeing this problem with the, the way in which vehicles were having accidents and the things that was breaking, in particular a front end. I would see a headlight on a car that looked perfectly intact. The lens is fine, the housing is fine, but the fitting where it actually fits to the rear, to the front panel, the front part of the vehicle, that's where it was breaking. Little lugs, lugs that you're not always are available to buy from the manufacturers. Yet the headlight can cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds to replace. I thought, how can I, how can I repair these headlights? It was one day I was watching a YouTube video and I come across a 3D printer. It was actually a Makerbot tuck pack, yeah? First, one of the first open source printers available commercially. And uh, I thought, hmm, this looks like the technology that can solve this problem. This is something I can use to start repairing these headlights, start saving my customers hundreds and hundreds of pounds. So I did some research and I myself, as a beginner, I looked at the kits that was available and I thought they looked a little bit complex. I thought they looked a little bit complicated. As a beginner, I'd probably be best to go out and buy a printer in its entirety. And that's what I did. I bought a 3D Touch, made at the time by Bits From Bytes, a company that then got purchased by 3D Systems. And I'm receiving my 3D Touch. I set about learning as much as I could. And I wanted to make these lugs and repair these headlights. So I would go to work and I would look for damage damaged parts on cars, headlights in particular, look at the LUDs. If they were missing, I would have to go to the opposite side of the vehicle, take some dimensions down and go home and I would use SketchUp. That was the very first program I learned on in order to create a LUD. I would then send it to the slicing software and print out my LUD, go to work the following day and repair the headlights. And it was from there that I started to get more and more interest. I was saving my customers hundreds and hundreds of pounds. But there was other components that was broken. Components that needed to be printed in other materials, ABS in particular. And unfortunately the BFB didn't have a heated build platform. Uh, it wasn't in a, a controlled environment. It wasn't a, an enclosed machine. Um, so I couldn't control things like temperature, if there was drafts going through the room, halfway through the print, the, the ABS could lift off the platform. So I decided to make my own 3D printer. And I spent endless nights watching videos and doing research and trying to get an understanding of what it was I needed to do. But I created my first 3D printer using a server cabinet. And it was from there that I, you know, I decided to build a heated chamber, I built a heated platform, and I started to get involved in what other technologies were out there in terms of print control boards, what was the best extruder, what was the best hot end. And yet it was you know, through a process of elimination, through a process of trial and error, uh, but I eventually got a good working printer that was, I was able to use flexible materials in, or the latest materials on, and more importantly, because I'd done it myself, I was able to adapt and change it. But it was from there that I thought, well, with all that knowledge that I've learned now, what if I could create a printer that was really easy to assemble? What if I could create a printer that everybody could build? What if I could create a printer that was easily available in terms of parts? And you see the amount of parts now uh, that are available from, from eBay, from Amazon, uh, you know, and, and through all the, the websites that are now set up dedicated to 3D printing. But what I, what I really need to do is I really need to think about the frame, yeah? And, and how I could have a framework that was easily accessible to people all around the world. And um, one thing I noticed is my BFB Touch 3D printer, since 2011, was sitting on an IKEA lap table. And I was looking at this IKEA lap table, 
All the inertia and all the energy of my printer moving around over the earth, all the hundreds and hundreds of prints I've done on, on this printer, and that lat table has stayed solid and exactly the same as it was five years ago when I first bought the printer. So I started investigating a little bit more. That's a, that table is for sale all over the world in all IKEA stores. So I start getting it, opening it up, cutting it open. I really wanted to get an understanding of how a lat table was constructed. I saw one open the legs and saw there was a great big piece of hollowness. Yeah, a bit of wood at the bottom, a bit of wood at the top. Yeah. But then I also had to think about well, how is that energy in a 3D printer transfer? You know, what is it that I'm really trying to accomplish? What I needed was a strong machine, not in terms of physical strength in terms of staying square. I had to focus more on the joints of it. And that's where the IKEA lap table is a really clever piece of furniture, especially when you see how much they cost. In the US, you can buy these for $9.99. $9 in the UK, for as little as five pounds. And I thought, yeah, this has got potential. So I start opening up the table, messing about even more, looking at all the different configurations that I can do the joints. The print table that I'm going to be showing you, that you're going to be building with me, is not, it's not just one step that I've done. It, this is an evolution of all the different configurations I've tried, all the different brackets that I've tried. Even using the honeycomb center, um, it, you know, the strength of the honeycomb center that that brings to the table. The IKEA table, comes in lots of different sizes as well. So whilst this is already a large format printer, especially when you compare it to things like the Prue the Ride 3 or the MakerBox, but the IKEA table, the lap range in particular, they do even bigger, bigger and bigger, bigger tables. And they've all got this common, common theme. How the legs are constructed, how the beds are, or how the table tops are constructed. And it's exactly that that I want to tap into and all the creators around the world. We can all get these tables, we can all design and create a better print table. We can develop it, yeah? We can share ideas. And it's that open source that I really want to promote. I, I couldn't have done what I've done today without all the other open source creators in the past and all the, all the support and all the information that they've given out to the community. All the videos I've watched, boards which, which are fantastic controllers, yet people are allowing them to duplicate and copy that hardware. And it, it, it's exactly that that has helped me to create the print table of today. And is also going to help you to develop and create the print table of tomorrow. Thank you.